In this video we would like to look at more complex design methods related to sectioning and array, uh, this design strategy, and for this I use the program Power3D. What I can do uh, with Power3D I, I can show already in this little example. I have my uh, plugin Power3D and I could for example just say uh, that I can uh, change uh, the shape, uh, moving it and uh, just uh, extending it. We can always see, see that it recalculates. I can change um, uh, dimensions. Uh, for example, I just make this part a little bit bigger and then I uh, update the whole thing and it's calculating. I can, for example, uh, change uh, the thickness of these um, of these objects and uh, then go for example here for a different thickness like uh, two centimeters and I can update it. You can see that I constantly can change the parameters and have a really good control about a quite complex shape. Okay, let's see how I did it. Um, I will just uh, hide my uh, little example and we start from scratch. The first thing I do is I uh, my example is based on uh, um, a shape and this shape uh, uh, consists of two rectangles. Uh, this is rectangle number one and uh, I convert it to uh, editable spline. Important is uh, because at the end of the day we would like to have a really nice and smooth uh, object with um, with clear lines. Um, really important is that I go to adaptive so I have more uh, segments and this will be really uh, a really nice and smooth uh, line. So this is my first object. Uh, I build um, um, another rectangle uh, slightly, uh, slightly smaller. That's my second rectangle and uh, then I choose my first one and uh, will attach the second one to the first one. So I have one editable spline. I will call it uh, power uh, sectioning 01 as uh, the beginning of my power 3D example. And the last thing I add is a shell modifier because so far it's only uh, a spline, means um, uh, lines. And if I add my shell modifier and uh, give them a decent thickness then I can start uh, with my with my little example. With a uh, white mouse click I open the quad menu and I go to uh, create parametric array. Obviously I need to install the program Power 3D and uh, I go into an array count of 50. Keep original object. Uh, I will switch off in this uh, example because I only need my 50 objects. And uh, if I go on uh, create and it asks me if I want to have uh, the, uh, the possibility to, uh, to transform this spline based object and I definitely want this. This is a basic idea and now I have to wait a little bit until uh, path 3D uh, is uh, ready to start. So here we go and uh, we have a look what we can do in terms of section and, and away with uh, Power 3D. I will not expand the program and uh, I just will show what uh, how I produce this shape. I go into a position and I will add a linear um, linear controller and a lin like linear controller uh, with a double click. Uh, I attach it to this. And what you can already see is that it um, uh, added all my 50 ways into a long line. And or what I can do is I can choose um, the front node and the back node and for example say that I move uh, this one uh, to the left and if I go to update uh, away you can see that the distance will change and they are a little bit longer. I can also uh, add, uh, add arrays, uh, the amount of way, extend the amount of uh, the way and, and so on. The next thing what I would like to do, I would like to be able to control the vertice points in this object and uh, I can do this if I go into the menu of uh, editable spline and in master with right mouse click I go to check all. 
Okay, what I did, I checked all my splines and uh, one spline consists of uh, the spline, uh, the vertex points and um, the little handles. Okay, I selected them all and uh, what I would like to do is I would like to add, uh, add the shape of several of these uh, little frames and have a smooth transition from sh one shape to the other and this means uh, I have to choose the interpolate controller and uh, what I also have to do is uh, I have to deselect uh, this uh, position to be able to, go, uh, to add a new controller to my vertex points. I will add this interpolate controller to all my uh, vertex points as an instance. Uh, the reason why I do it as an instance is this means it's much faster to adjust uh, the basic settings and now it calculates a little bit and we can see that all, all my splines have one, uh, one controller uh, which I can uh, adjust in the way I would like to have it. Okay, I would like to choose four of these uh, frames uh, to be able to adjust them and uh, have a smooth uh, transition between this. So I choose the first frame and uh, this is PowerSect01. I click uh, Add to Selected Item. I choose uh, another one, for example this one, and I go to uh, um, um, add to uh, selected items. I choose uh, this one. I go to uh, add selected items and I choose the last one. Go to uh, selected items and it's definitely a really good idea uh, to change the color of number 16 and number 33 so it's much easier to find them at the end. Okay, we had number 16 and number 16 will get uh, its own color and we had number 33 and uh, number 33 and number 33 will also get it o get its own color so now it's really easy to um, uh, to adjust the uh, the frames we would like to work with okay what i do is i will choose both of them uh, and go into the isolate selection mode and uh, now I can uh, choose each frame and for example take this one and uh, select all my vertex points and uh, I'm able to play a little bit with the shape of, uh, of these uh, vertex points and uh, you can see uh, what I'm doing. I'm just uh, adjusting it a little bit and also uh, the inside, inside vertex points and um, do it quickly so it doesn't take uh, it doesn't take too long and I will do the same with the other one I choose my um, uh, second shape I go to vertex point I select all of them and uh, uh, adjust it the other way around for example like this the same uh, the same here Make this a lot smaller and uh, this is just really rough what, uh, what I'm doing and uh, when I did this uh, I can uh, go again to uh, zoom ex uh, to, uh, uh, to look at the whole shape and the only thing I have to do afterwards go to uh, update all controllers and we can see that my shape will change in the way um, I want it to change. Okay, I made one big mistake. Uh, I used inst instant to be much faster in terms of um, attach attaching the controller. What I have to do afterwards, I have to uh, take this controller and go into uh, the setting make unique. So every controller, every spline has its own controller, otherwise they have the, all the same, uh, the same setting, the same parameters. That's uh, why uh, you can't uh, you can't see them anymore the other um, the other frames so what I do is I go uh, to the setting make unique I have to wait a little bit afterwards and now I can see that every uh, spline in vertex uh, vertex point and out vertex uh, handle has its own controller and if I now go to update all controllers the uh, shape 
shape will change and it changes in a way which I actually uh, expected and what I can do right now is I can for example go and select one of these again I can make it slightly uh, slightly smaller now uh, this one I, um, I will scale a little bit and the other one in the middle I will also uh, scale and you can see that once I set up my system it's a really easy and fast uh, way of um, of designing and have full control of uh, my whole shape. All properties I can adjust in Power 3D. I can, for example, choose my shell modifier, which adjusts the thickness of the object. I can choose my inner and my outer amount, and I can also, for example, uh, uh, attach this uh, interpolate controller, or I can also just uh, go into a um, a random controller and uh, attach a random controller and then uh, say that there's a random between 0 0.1 and a maximum uh, thickness of 0 point, uh, of uh, 2 centimeters and if I go into update you can see that this whole thing changes randomly and uh, always when, uh, when I go into update you can see it, that it changed the parameters or I can also um, uh, say that um, that I go into uh, again into an interpolate controller or any other controller and uh, then uh, change the thickness also adjust it to my outer amount and then uh, change uh, the thickness uh, related to this object like I did it before I will choose uh, frame number one and I will choose uh, this uh, this frame and the next uh, red frame which I already choose beforehand and uh, the last one and afterwards I will change um, the settings the first frame has a thickness of uh, inner and outer amount of two, uh, two centimeters altogether here uh, I will adjust it to a really thin thickness uh, two millimeters actually and uh, this one will also have uh, um, probably four millimeters all together and the last one I will uh, make even thicker three, uh, three centimeters all together and if I go to um, update all controllers you can see the smooth transition between the thick parts and the really um, really thin uh, sectioning elements uh, in my shape.